In this video, we're going to learn how to make our own pocket payment sound box using ESP32. similar to the latest Paytm Pocket sound box and also our upgraded version of TechSMS sound box that we made around 2 years back and trust me, it got a lot of improvements in it. I'll be talking about all those things in this video so just keep watching this video till the end and let's start with the hardware part of the project. So now to make this project, you'll need these all components. Now here, I have used the Xiao ESP32 C3 board as it is very small in size and also got built-in programming circuit and the battery management circuit in it. And here, I still went with this MP3 module rather than the i2s amplifier because using this board, you can customize any voice that you want. Maybe your own voice or maybe any other computer generated voice, which I'll let you know how to generate later in this video itself. So now after getting all the components, you need to connect them all according to the schematic diagram. Now here to make the project really compact, we designed a custom PCB for it and this time, we placed the order in PCB Go Go. Now for those who don't know about this company then PCB GoGo is a PCB manufacturer in China that is operating since 2015 and currently they are processing more than 3000 orders per day which is really huge. And ordering PCBs online is really simple here. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, after that select the number of PCBs and color masking of your choice. Later, select the shipping option as per your location and now here, PCB GoGo offers 24 hours PCB manufacturing time without any extra cost if you allow to add the logo on it. It's really convenient for makers like us. Now after that, your design will be reviewed for any error and later, after reviewing, you can pay for your order and get it delivered at your doorstep. The PCBs come safely in a vacuum packaging and the PCB quality is really top notch. Now currently they are having an amazing offer where you can get $25 worth PCBs at just a dollar for all the new users and you can also get free shipping if you are from North America or Europe. So just click the links mentioned in the description and get your next PCBs from PCB Go Go. Now after getting the PCBs, we first shouldered the Xiao ESP32 C3 board with its SMD pad using our oven and later we shouldered all other DIP components one by one and after shouldering them all, the final project looks like this. It seems really compact, isn't it? So that was all about the hardware part of the project. And now let's move on to the coding part. Okay, so here's the complete code used for our pocket sound box. And I'll go through all the important aspects of this board and explain you how it is working. So first of all, we are beginning all the UART communication like for serial monitor, for CM800 module and for the MP3 module, all are working on UART. Then CM800 configuration, which we need, we need not to change. We'll keep it as it is. Then here are some necessary libraries whose links and the version number, which I'm using are mentioned here. So just verify that you're using the same one. Straight after that, here are the necessary variables. Then here are the LED indicator, which are connected to this respect to GPIO pins and here is a previous button which is connected to D3 and it will be used to play the previous amount received which is already stored in the device. Later we are having the GPRS credentials. Now here let me tell you this is working on a SIM 800 model which is only supporting 2G connectivity. So talking about India then only VI that's Vodafone idea and Airtel SIM card supports the 2G connectivity. So make sure you use those two or any of the two SIM card and after confirming that you need to provide the API name as well and you can get the APN name from Google where you just need to search for APN name for example I was using the VI SIM card so I just search for VI APN name for 2G and I got www which I have provided here you need to search for the APN name of your network provider and provide it here then GPS username password is nil in my case later we need to provide the Adafruit IO credential for that you can go to io.adafruit.com and from here you can get all the credentials for example the broker name will be the same io.adafruit.com then the topic name will be different in your case and you can find the topic name by going into feed then the topic where you are receiving the amount and here inside the feed info this is the complete topic name like username feeds and the name of the uh, feed that you need to provide here later on the mqt username and password you can get it easily by clicking on the yellow icon this is the username this is the aio key or the password you can say and provide it here and with this you have provided all the important parameters that is required for this project to work on your end as well later on let me explain how this is working so let's directly jump on to the setup part so here we are beginning all the serial communication 
uh, making the LEDs and buttons as input output respectively. Then here we are initializing the MP3 module and will play the sound as uh, powering up and stuff like that. After powering up, initializing the MP3 module, we are first of all resetting the SIM 800 module. Well, here resetting is important just to make sure all the settings are set to the default configuration. So that's why we are resetting. It definitely takes a lot of time to reset the modem. So we need to wait for that. After resetting, we are turning off the LED on the SIM 800 module just to save the battery. Later after resetting, once it is connected to the GSM network, what we are doing is we are making the connection with the GPRS and as we are using the GPRS or the internet connectivity, make sure your SIM card has an active data plan in it. Otherwise, all your balance will get exhausted and the project may not work. So let's recharge your SIM card with the active data plan and after it get connected with GPRS, it will establish the connect uh, connection with the MQTT broker and once it connected, it will also say MQTT connected and with this, we are done with all the configuration and all the connections. Now the loop part is really very simple. We are just checking the MQTT parameters and also checking the button. First of all, let's talk about the MQTT. So as soon as we receive any data, receive the payment, it will just call this MQTT callback function in which we are printing the data received. After that, what we are doing is we are converting the data into the actual amount. Now, as I said a lot of time in my like previous episode of the series that the razor pay amount is received considering the two decimal values. For example, if we are sending the rupees one, it will print as one zero zero. So we need to convert that one zero zero into one point zero zero. And for that, we are doing all these calculations. Once we get the final amount, we are providing that final amount into the voice commands function, which is provided in the code itself. So here is that voice command function which will speak out the amount received. Now it is a very complex function and I have explained how this function is made or how this function is working in my previous episode, which was about the Techie SMS Soundbox version one, whose link I'll provide in the description of this video. So if you want to understand how we are speaking out all the amount, definitely watch that video out. It's really an amazing function, amazing logic being used here. So that was all about the MQT callback function. And once it speaks out, it will not do anything and just wait for another amount. Okay. So that was all about the MQT dot loop. And now for the button check, well, this is a very simple function. In this function, we are just polling the previous button. So if the previous button is pressed, we will just call the voice command function once again, and we'll just play the previous amount received, which is already stored in the previous underscore payload variable. So that was the really simple code. Well, not so simple code, but yeah, that was the simplest explanation about how this project or how this code is actually working. I hope you understand. Now let's just uh, select the right board and COM port and hit the upload button. So the right board in this case is the Xiao ESP32 C3 board. And as I already connected this board with my computer, let me select the right COM port. So here's the right COM port and let's just straight away hit the upload button. Now till the code gets uploaded, let me show you how to get the computer generated voice and how how to store in which format we need to store in the SD card. Let me show you. So now to get the computer generated voice, you can go to voicemaker.in website and here you can get all different kinds of voices. For example, uh, here you can select the type of voice that you want by clicking on the change button. And here you can select the language and the accent as well. Well, here some of the voices are free while some others are premium. So choose it according to your convenience. The one with the letter P are the premium one. And here you can hear the sample audio as well. For example, I have selected this uh, from Aditi. Let's play it. Good afternoon. I am capable of reading any text that you type here. For example. So this is the free uh, voice that I have selected and let us hear one premium as well. Good afternoon. I am capable of reading any text that you type here. Premium definitely sounds better, but let's go with the free one. So I selected this and click on the submit button. Now here I can type whatever statement I want to convert in the audio. Okay. So for example, uh, whenever the uh, sound box powers up, I'll just say techie SMS sound box powering up and just click on convert to speech. Techie SMS sound box powering up. So that's the audio file generator and here you can just click on the download button and it, will, and it will download the mp3 file of that text. And similarly, you can type any text you want, which will be converted into speech or we can say audio. And later you need to store all that file into the SD card according to this specific format only. Yes. So here you can change the voice as you want. No problem, but keep the naming 
same as I have provided here because if you change the name you need to change the code as well so if you don't want to go into changing the code part well make sure you keep the name as it is so these are for the powering up a network connector all uh, stuff like that and for the payment part uh, all the data is stored in the mp3 folder for example one two three and then up to hundred and thousand so all the data is stored here so just store the data store the audio file in the specific format only in the sd card and you are good to go to insert the sd card into your payment sound box so after the hardware coding and the audio files part, now we are good to go to test our project. But before that, to make the project looks more neat, I got myself a 3D printed case for this project and started assembling the hardware in the case. Later, I got a sticker printed with my RazorPay QR code on it and sticked it up on the top of the case which makes it look really very cool, isn't it? Now on the left side of the project, we have a slot for SIM card, so here I'm using my VI SIM card and I'll insert it in this direction. Then on the right side of the box, we have a slot for SD card, so I'll insert the card having all my audio recordings in this direction. Now let's power it up. So now let me show you how much time it takes to get connected with the network and the MQT server. So as you saw, it takes around 15 seconds to connect with network and around 25 seconds to connect with the MQT server. Now this time may be different in your case, maybe more, maybe less. But anyways, it got successfully connected with the network and MQT broker. So now let's do the payment and test it out. So here I'll scan the QR code and let's enter the amount of 3.45 rupees. That's the time of uploading my YouTube video. Now after that, I'll click on the submit payment button and as soon as the payment is done, I'll start the timer and let's see how much time it takes. Hey, we received the amount of rupees 3 and 45 paise. So it took around 4.7 seconds to play the audio. Let's try a couple of more times. So second time it took around 4.4 seconds. And when I tried for the third time, it took around 3.9 seconds, which is really fast. But when I tested it later, I also got the time as low as 2.8 seconds, which is insane, isn't it? Well, here we have a button to play the previous amount received. Let's test it out. Hey, we received the amount of rupees 5 and 55 paise. So that was all about the making and the demo of our own made pocket payment sound box. I hope you liked it. No, no, no. I'm definitely sure you liked it. Then just show it to me by smashing that like button and also share your thoughts about this project down in the comments of the video. Also, we are selling this project through our website techasms.com whose link you can find in the description of this video. And along with the project purchase, you'll also be getting the complete code for this project, which you can modify it according to your Adafruit.io cloud and payment gateway, upload it onto this project to make your own pocket payment sound box. And also we'll be providing all the audio recording files along with this. So go get one for yourself right now as I'm giving an early bird discount only till 2nd of April 11.59 pm according to Indian Standard Time. Later, the prices will definitely increase. But remember, only purchase this project if you have a business payment gateway account, a SIM card that supports 2G connectivity, and only if you know how to program the Xiao C3 board using Arduino IDE because this is a project for makers and not a ready product for consumers. Our main agenda of selling this project is for learning purpose only so that people can buy it, they can program it, customize it as, as they want and can learn from it practically. And yeah, that was all about the payment sound box and also that was all about my webhook series. I hope you got to learn so many new things from all the three episodes of this series. And if it's so, well, definitely share this video with your IoT or electronic enthusiast friends so that they can also start learning and using webhooks practically in IoT. And yeah, that being said, and I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video or next series. Until then, explore, learn, share with me. Take SMS.